Alright, let's start this thing. Hello! There's a lot of you. Wow. I'm nervous. <laughs> okay, so welcome to my workshop about monster sounds. Ooh. So um, it's not really a workshop, sorry. It's more like me showing and telling stuff. And then kind of teach this is more like a teaching talk than a workshop. But if you have laptops, if you can just do that stuff wherever you sit. <laughs> like, but I'm like, yeah, do blah, 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 and I'll pitch it to that, and people are like, yeah, I can do that. I take notes, whatever. So, um, just a small disclaimer, I think I'm like a tiny bit ill, so my throat, you can't hear my voice, it's like, <laughs> so, sorry if I take weird pauses. It's me having a stroke. I am me being ill. <laughs> All right. Well, just wait for these people to sit down and then we can start. Oh, wow, there's a little bit more people. Well, I'll start because it's the boring stuff. So let's just give a small intro about me. Boring, boring stuff. That's not me, but maybe in a few years. Uh, so, and really classy of me, I stole this, picked this whole thing from my talk about nuclear throne, because I'm kind of lazy. Um, so, my name is Jonas Turner. I'm a video game sound designer and voice actor. Uh, some of the games I've worked on. Uh, Bro Force. Do you guys know Bro Force? Yes. yes. I'm the announcer and enemies of Bro Force. Believe it or not. I'm apparently, like, someone's playing uh, Bro Force on YouTube, some, like, really American word. And they were like, oh, this announcer is the most American person ever. Do I sound American? Fuck. <laughs> uh, Expander Bros. We did a tie in with the Expendables. I worked a bit on the Swapper, doing like some reverb programming stuff. Uh, environmental Station Alpha, that was released day, uh, yesterday. No, the day before yesterday. Woo! Getting on Steam. I'm not paid to say that, but I wish I was. Um, Crater Fix Deluxe, I did sounds like that. Turbo Dismount, a game called Badland. You probably can't see it behind. No, no, there's Badland. A game called Nuclear Throne. Do you guys know Nuclear Throne? Yeah. <laughs> and a bunch of other games that give me money, but I don't really know yeah, okay. uh, So, <laughs> I hope no one works for Rovio. Okay. Nah, that's fine. Shit. Um, so, moving on. Actually, I want to do a text thing. Good. So, first off, using your voice as a good basis. So, when I start Monster Sounds, and what, which is kind of what I want to encourage people to do, sorry, like the mic is here, but I like talk here and walk around a bit spastic. But, um, so, um, a good base for vocals, which I kind of want to encourage people to do, is use their own voice. That's like, if you have a jam game or something, or even a proper game, you want to do Monster Sounds quick, why not use the instrument you've used most of your life? Your voice. It's really fun. And the important thing about this is... Active. Like, and many people are kind of weirded out by their own voice when you hear it. And they're like, I don't want to use my voice like me doing monsters, like rah, rah, and you hear that, you're like, Jesus, that's kind of embarrassing. But the key is to act. Oh, should I just take the mic? <laughs> <laughs> Burn. <laughs> Luckily, I'm not paid for this. <laughs> so, so, a key thing is to act. How original of me. Like, what I do is, when I start doing monsters, I kind of envision me being the monster. I know I look kind of like a monster, but, you know, like different monsters. Like a tentacle monster. I'd like go, what does it, like, flaps and shit. And then they're like, when I do what's that thing, I have the mic like this, I'm like, 
I do stuff like that. And that makes me feel like I'm the monster, and that already differs me when I listen to the file. I don't listen to myself, like, oh, it's me doing a funny voice. I'm like, oh, that's the alien in me or something? Wow, that sounds really bad. Um, Hentai alert. Um, but yeah, like, try to get into the alien. <laughs> The inner alien. <laughs> I totally prepared for this. Uh, so, let's try some that stuff. What kind of alien do you want to hear? Let's do like some sewer gurgling alien. Um, so, I'll just take my setup here. I have Pro Tools here. I have a program called Pro Tools here, which is an audio software. Oh, actually, how many of you are sound designers or just interested in sound in general and do stuff? What? That's like a new record. Usually when I do it, it's like one person, like, mm, kind of shy, I don't know, I'm cool edit pro. And this is like fully blown. How many of you do this as a profession? Fuck, yeah. This is scary, now I'm nervous. So. How many of you do <laughs> How many of you do voice acting as well? Yeah, cool. So for the people who don't do this, I'll show some stuff. So I would take my microphone and stuff and just do a gurgling alien. So I'll just go in front of the mic. Let's do let's do melting from nuclear probe. So it's like strong. <laughs> That was shooting a shotgun. Oh wow, it's clipping, but I don't care. Um, so listen to that. It's like. Uh, yeah, from, so it's like. <laughs> that was shooting a shotgun. Whoa! So, like, that's kind of cool, but then there's a neat thing. Then there's a neat thing that I would make that even kind of more gurgly, and that's called pitch shifting. So I would take the pitch of my voice and go like lower. So let's do that. I don't know. <laughs> wow, I made that pretty cool. <laughs> even more down, more gurglier. <laughs> so, kind of remember that. I'll write that down in my memo over here. Ugh. There. So, acting. Pitch. Pitch. Shifting. I don't use like PDFs. Uh, pitch shift. Remember that. If you have an audio software, Go and find where it says pitch shift. Take that, gurgle yourself down. You can go even up by Pro Tools. It sounds like shit, so I won't do that. Um, but you have like a better audio program there somewhere. Um, <laughs> Neela. Um, cool. So tell me if I'm going too fast or if I'm sounding a bit weird. Remember, I'm like semi ill. <laughs> Excuse us. So another cool thing is. Like when you've done stuff with your voice, another thing is if you want to make your voice even more different, your normal voice, you can try like placing your hands in front of your mouth in different ways. Like if I go like that and I'm doing that, it already sounds different. Well, like you can do it in tunnels. Like think about stuff like animals and stuff. You want something with a longer nose. You would, like take your hand and just do that, or like have two hands and go like. It's different, right? So remember that, like cool neat things like that, or especially the acting part. If I have like a monster has like <laughs> flaps, like Dr. Zoidler, you just I just do that. But sometimes you do that like with your throat, like I gotta do something different. Like think about these funny things. They look stupid, they sound stupid, but when they're in context, you make crazy money in early access. <laughs> <laughs> I kid, I kid, I'm far as fuck. So, um, oh, sorry, I'm supposed to swear. Um, another cool thing is using objects like in front of your mouth and stuff. That sounds really K18, but it isn't. Well, it could be. 
Oh, I wish I would have drank this earlier. But um, like take stuff like plastic tubes or toilet paper rolls and put those in front of your mouth. It makes it. It makes your like different materials make your voice resonate differently inside of these things. So let's say if I would make a like really long nose, like I'm a bear monster from the future. I would, um, especially from the future. I would like use like long uh, tubes in front of my mouth, so my vocals would be like really, like really like this, but kind of like enough distance, so it kind of becomes less human. And that's really cool. Like I wish I could show that to you now, but. Does anyone have like toilet paper with them? <laughs> oh yes, sorry. Not used. Um, <laughs> oh, another cool thing is like like metal cups and like bake bean like tins, and you like shout in them or talk through them. They make your voice resonate really cool. Like tr try stuff like that. Like talk through a paper and whatever. It makes your vocal go really cool, like radio, like. Like, you have all these things. Banana peel doesn't work that well, by the way, but um, let's go for it. And experiment. That's like the basis I want to people to do after this is experiment and make their own monster vocals. So I talked about pitch shift. Another cool thing is if you use audio software, you can do stuff like modulation effects. So let's take this gurgly fucker and give him some modulation effects. Let's make it. Yeah. <coughs> so we have that. <coughs> and let's add some effects. Like let's say a chorus, which makes your vocal go. Modulation effects, like if you listen to movies and you see a lot of like all cartoons, whatever, or video games, and you hear like you see aliens, they usually have something to do that to difference, differentiate. Fuck, I can not speak. Differentiates like the human element from the object. So uh, I think was he in Bloodborne? Have you guys played Blood Bloodborne? Oh, this one. Yes. Um, I think like there's these weird. Blobby alien guys, alien fellas, and they kind of have that cool thing like, <laughs> and it's like, like modulation effect. Like, just listen to that thing in games and try to emulate it with modulation. That was weird. Uh, another cool thing is stretching. Like, you take the audio, like, let's take this vocal and let's stretch it like, instead of. This is a weird, weird call. <laughs> So what I'm essentially doing is just stretching it. You can also do really, really cool ambiences like this. Yeah, that's what I listen to when I go to sleep. My mic already makes it sound different, like. Experiment. That's the thing. Like, I'm being lazy, not showing, not showing stuff. I'm just saying experiment. Let's take another vocal for next time. Um, so stretching is really handy. And the thing is, like, have you guys played Broforce? Woo! There's a few people. So, uh, 
Have you guys heard the terrorists in Rogue Force? They kind of sound funny. They're like, <laughs> like stuff like that. And the aliens are like, <laughs> like that. Yeah, there's aliens in Rogue Force. Uh, so the thing is, how I made them sound that hectic is you just time stress them. So let's. This is not a monster, it's a terrorist, but they're kind of like human monsters, right? <laughs> so, I'll show you what I did with them. write anything down this list to even use it. <laughs> so I'm gonna write this using any <laughs> not using animals but using their sounds. Ah. So animal sounds oh man the thing is a lot of people like to use animal sounds for monsters. I don't I kind of like to use my own voice a lot and like emulate animals with my own vocals. This makes it more fun. But using animals sometimes for monsters can be super cool. Like think about lions and tigers. Like for people who don't really do audio, just go to like free sound or something and download animal sounds. Or just like but for professionals, we can just go out in the wild and record them, right? <laughs> Tigers! <laughs> <laughs> like, it's doable, it's doable. <laughs> That's how I lost like a hundred pounds, I was running away from a bear. Fuck, fuck. That wasn't a gun, that was a microphone. Um, <laughs> Jesus. Um, so, lions and tigers are amazing for like visceral sounds. I can write that down. Lions and... Or oh, we're in Germany, I'll do und. <laughs> Tigers are... That's how Germans are. For... <laughs> for visceral stuff. Whoa, it's crying, fuck. So, for visceral stuff, you're really cool, like... Think about, like crazy scary like guardians of a palace and they're like <laughs> and you don't want it to sound like that you want it like to be more visceral uh that was kind of visceral but like uh, fuck i don't even know how to talk um if you want to make them more non-human like i guess just experiment animals so wait let me find this like already having that that's something that's like big guardian, it's like no entry. You would take like a tiger and try to pitch it that down, it's like absolutely not, get out of here. So try using like animal sounds and experiment with them. And, like different animals give you like different effects of course. Like lions and tigers are really visceral and big, they sound huge. 
scary, Ooh, oh my god. So next up, oh, and that is small tree, I think. This is not about voice acting as much, but listen to car motors on films and games sometimes. When you hear people at like starting the car, you might hear a small lion in there. Ooh. <laughs> it's really cool. Um, goats and sheep. Goats and sheep are good or weird, mystical. I just like, I want to get through this stuff. Mystical. Alphabets, man. This is going to be mystical and satanic stuff. Satanic stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so remember that, like having goats, like <laughs> that's like, ooh, fuck, that's scary. Like in context, it's scary. You're like, ah, oh, yeah, goats, what the hell? Like, but when you play a game like Demon Souls or Skyrim or something, and you see like a demon fella coming from the wrong corner, they're like, <laughs> you're like, fuck, take my sword. <laughs> so let's listen to some goats and let's make them scary. This talk is a shamble, that's fine. That is funny. <laughs> I'm a shamble. <laughs> wow, I'm a little scared of you. <laughs> okay. The thing is, now it sounds like a good pitch if there's no biggie, but when you're in a world like this, you'd be walking here, suddenly someone turns to you like, go like, <laughs> like Think about this stuff. And these are like goats are my favorite go-to thing with monster. <laughs> goats are my favorite thing with go-to ambiences. Like if I'd be making sounds for a game like Diablo or something, I didn't make some for Diablo. I wish I did. Um, but like if you want a scary demonic ambience, having a like pitch shift and stretched goat in the background makes it really scary. Like you're in a dungeon and you hear like <laughs> in the distance. That's scary in real life too. Think about it. <laughs> so think of animals as scary, scary things, scary beings. I just no fuck I won't. Uh, wait, just give me a sec. something that's like like a tone or something and it's like in the distance I assure you your client will give you bonus money not for me though uh, but for you uh, so I don't think I don't even want to write that try experimenting with different animal sounds like think about like elephants or even like dogs like oh, dog snarls how many of you own a dog? You guys know when a dog goes like like that's scary. That's the exact sound a dog makes. <laughs> no, but like an angry dog. It's not like an angry birds. But angry dogs, they're really scary. Uh, like try microphoning one of those ones and pitch it that down. I don't have any samples with me, sorry, but that stuff is scary. So when you making your jam game, just ask your dog around, like, hey, yeah, want some monster sounds. Dog is like, yeah, man. <laughs> like, if you have like a bulldog or a pug, like pug, so cute. Breathing problem sounds so great. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> no, it's true. I don't mean it in a mean way. Oh no. 
quite sure. Um, another cool thing. Ooh, let's turn into synthesizer. I, is that how you pronounce it? Yeah, I'll write it. Just imagine it says using synthesizer sounds. Um, so synthesizers are great if you want to do big robotic monster stuff. Uh, <laughs> so, um, how many of you have played Nuclear Throne? Oh, great. Wow. It's nice. So, um, have you ever got to the boss called Big Dog? <laughs> it's the dog with three heads. He makes this weird, like, <laughs> kind of a sound. And that's all made with synthesizers. Like, now we get into some technical talk, sorry. Um, you take a synthesizer, you get like a sawtooth patch or something, you know, like legendary 90s techno, like... <laughs> you take it like that, you go to a low key, you adjust, like you automate with the pitch bend, the pitch and filters, and if you have like wow filters, like all kind of stuff, adjust that, like put that in the same automation. So. When you scrub with the pitch wheel, it goes like And if you distort the hell out of that, pop some reverb, pop some delay on it, it will be like And I will demonstrate that to you, but I won't actually create it because I don't have a synth here. Let's play you a small clip. I told you it's not really a workshop. <laughs> Is anyone learning anything here? Yes. yes. <laughs> Good. <laughs> you can do stuff like that. So for some people, uh, especially like beginning designers, with synthesizers, just kind of think outside, this is going to be so original, think outside the box with synths. Like sometimes when you hear like a cool like, like drum and bass, neuro patch or something, just think how that might fit in a game. Like you pitch that down, it's like it's really cool. Like Noisia, a band called Noisia. If you know that, that stuff would make cool sci-fi sounds for a game. Next up, let's move these guys. So synthesizer is really cool. Um, then using random everyday objects. Um, a really cool thing I noticed when creating. Like actually, I'll do this story in another perspective. Let's say. You're washing dishes. Why not? And then you pull out the plug and it goes like <laughs> that's, that's what my thing sounds like. Uh, <laughs> pitch it down, that is. Um, it's really like just listen to those things. Like a sink doing that. And you pitch it that down, you can't like the <laughs> bitch. Like pitch. Bits, B I T S. Uh, I'm from Finland, come on. B I T S. <laughs> Every day objects. Objects. Listen to stuff. Um, that's actually really important. Listen to stuff. 
Um, so yeah, think about like water going like and stuff like that. Like big jellyfish monster flying at you. <laughs> like grey material and like Okay, you can do it with your mouth as well, but it's sometimes cool to just use like microphone a sink drain. Uh, good thing for like squishy, gurgly aliens and stuff is using pudding. Like just white pudding, put it in a bowl and like start just experimenting and stuff like that. Like how in Blizzard, some of the designers, when they made jerklings. Have you guys played StarCraft ever? Yeah, when they made like jerklings, they like filled a like full chicken with like whipped cream and stuff. That's like, <laughs> like stuff like that. And it's really cool. And like fruit, like pineapples, uh, watermelons, tomato and stuff. All of these make different sounds, they're good for also hitting sounds, or stabbing sounds, or <laughs> really cool, and, but if you want to like use those for monster vocals, like just imitate the sound of vocal with your hands, does it make any sense? Like, like, hello, it would be like, <laughs> and stuff like that. It's, it sounds and looks stupid, but it's really cool. <laughs> Wet toilet paper, brilliant, I said that here last year. When I had a number workshop, I was talking about using wet toilet paper for like slimy and sludgy stuff, but that's also really great for vocals. Take like a big ball of toilet paper, like wet toilet paper, and just go like <laughs> and then you like add a bit of breathing yourself like on top of that. Like <laughs> so it already sounds like a spaghetti monster talking to you. It's really cool. Um, metal screeches. Oh man, I love metal screeches. Like for crazy scary robots and stuff. Um, go to like your local grill, like outdoor grill or something, and just move parts around. Like me and Nilo sitting over here, we were once in a forest recording sounds before birds woke up. True story. And that's the crazy thing about being a sound guy. Like you have to actually like look at when birds wake up and stuff. Go and record outdoors when they're sleeping. <laughs> Keep that in mind. Lots of noise. Um, we went to this forest and we found this crazy cool grill, like outdoor grill. And we were like uh, opening it, putting stuff in, and so on and so on. It made like <laughs> sounds. And when you pitch it those up or down, and like kind of try to make it emulate um, like vocals, it does some really cool stuff. Like, has anyone? Sorry, I'm talking so much about Nuclear Throne. I want to sell the game more so we can pay rent. So, um, have you ever got to the throne fight in Nuclear Throne? Yes. Ooh. Oh yes, you work on the game. Uh, I'll just show you what I mean. Just give me a sec. It's a little not a Room is laughing at you. Pretty neat. 
need, right? Like, use grills, they're cool. And like other metal <laughs> objects, like old gates are amazing. If you find like rusty buckets and stuff, don't throw them away. Keep them if you're a sound person. Just, Jesus Christ, they are so cool. <laughs> Man. Um, what else cool? Ooh, for like monster and like uh, not monster, uh, robotic sounds. Servo motors. The servo, um, you know, like RC cars or tooth electric toothbrushes or like drills or whatever. Especially yellow drills. Um, <laughs> but think about like drills. You can like do stuff like so. Let's say a big monster is walking. Toothbrushes and uh, drills and stuff. This is going to sound really K18, but one of the like best, cheaper options for like servo motors, or, like really powerful servo motors, are kind of semi cheap and you can adjust them like without steps, like freeform, are actually vibrators from <laughs> adult stores. That's weird if your studio has them lying around, but <laughs> but they are really good actually for sounds. Not just human <laughs> sounds, Jesus. But like you can do stuff like a hand moving, like and you place that on like let's say a metal sheet or wood or something, it's like it changes the tone. And that's actually really handy. <laughs> no pun intended. Jesus. <laughs> is this like stand-up? <laughs> CK Lewis, here I come. Um, oh. <laughs> oh god. This is going so well. Another cool thing about another really cool thing is sorry, I haven't really shown anything in Pro Tools, but like that. Um, stuff like wings, you have like a giant dragon going <laughs> like flying, that's a giant dragon. Uh, a thing that I noticed was really cool is using like leather clothes, like jackets and whatever, and like wings, let's say the giant dragon is flying, <laughs> and you would take like a leather coat and just like go <laughs> with that in front of the mic, and another thing is like if you want to sound more leathery, because if you do that with a leather jacket, it sounds like wings flapping. That's like what's the dragon called in Hobbit? Smog. Yeah, that smelly smog. He's got some leather in his wings. Like experiment with stuff like clothes. Different clothes make different kinds of sounds, and that's how you get like easy wing flaps. Like. <laughs> Really cool. And another thing with like leather clothing, you can just like grab them and go like <laughs> like that, and you add those two together, so it's like <laughs> sounds really neat. I promise you. Um, neat. So use random everyday objects. They're cool. Cool for monster sounds. Like thing is how I approach monster sounds or robotic, or alien, or whatever sound this, I break them down into pieces, like mentally, like, let's say, a client comes to me like, okay, I want a weird tentacle mouth flap monster that spits acid at you. I would kind of break it into pieces, so let's write weird tentacle monster with <laughs> if mouth flaps spitting acid. Ah, oh, it's so hardcore. Spittung, is that a word in some form? Spitting acid. So I would take that. I would think, oh, okay, we're a tentacle monster with mouth flaps spitting acid. First, I would take ah oh, tentacle. How would I? What does he do with the tentacles? Then they're like, oh well, the tentacles are actually like. It has mouth flaps and tentacles come out and like strike at you. I would like dissect it too. Okay, first I need tentacles come out beneath mouth flaps. I'm like, oh, that's interesting. So I need the mouth flaps to open. Like, 
and then I need the tentacles to go like <laughs> And that's kind of how I dissect it. I know, okay, I need to do first the mouth flaps. How would I do the mouth flaps? Then I'm like, okay, eating bananas. I'm like, that kind of looks like mouth flaps. So I'll just take this. I could actually try to make that sound here. So I'll take the mouth flaps. Just give me a sec. So, with tentacles, why not use like what we've done as a kid, like we are like teasing fridge, like ah, pfft, and stuff like that, but dissecting that into, hmm, tongue kind of looks and feels like a tentacle, I guess. So, why not kind of try to do something to that? So, what I would think is like, it kind of sounds like a tentacle, right? So, I would try that. Let's see how that works. I have no idea how it works. Wrong mic! Wrong mic. Professional! <laughs> That's gonna be crazy. So, let's cut that. right away like if you can see I want in the game when it says okay play this file it has to start right away instead of like being here so it's like I press a button and it's like <laughs> instead it has to be like <laughs> so keep that in mind It was a weird tentacle monster attacking. Oh, and spitting acid. So I would ask, I see it spit acid while it does the tentacle attack. They're like, mm, yeah, why not? Uh, how, do, how do you know? I don't know. We're still demoing. Okay, cool. So I would make it, and I'm like, what about if it attacks with the mouth flaps and then it spits acid at you? And I'm like, oh, cool, let's try that. So let's do this. 
don't mind about clipping, it's festival clipping, it's fun. Um, so, how would I approach spitting acid? Hmm. I would go, okay, this is spit action, like the actual, like, <coughs> like spitting. I mean, okay, I can do that. Like, I've done a few spits in my life. So, why not try it with this monster? So, I would go on and record that, and I would be like, hmm, but well, what about the acid? What does acid sound like? In movies, it's kind of like, tss. what better than soda? Soda makes sounds, so also something else. But, um, so at first I would be like, okay, let's do the spin. So it's like, <laughs> let's try that. Sorry if I spit on top of anyone, by Acid a bit, yes. not acid as in, but like acid as in like. So. Boy, it's fun. It is the shittiest acid I've ever done. There's too much noise here, it's not gonna happen. I'm gonna try it with my mouth. <laughs> Just like, you know, game jams and stuff. There's lots of people, so keep that in mind. What do you do? Drink this and try it. Nope, that's not, that just looks weird. <laughs> Thank you. 
check out this. <coughs> yeah, my work. Game jam game, I'd say, yeah, good job, guys. <laughs> and the thing is, I'm like, feels kind of cool, but feels kind of cool, but the thing is, I kind of like attack sounds to have more punch on them. You know, like instead of having a weapon go like, if you add a small like in front of it, it's like. And that's the kind of stuff I like. So, how would I go about doing this? Again, I would probably try for a game jam game with my mouth doing something. Oh, I have coffee around me, Jesus. So, let's try to make a impact sound. Just give me a second. Instead of being like, I want to be like, like really action, like, oh, they're coming at me. No way, they're coming at me, not on me. Uh, so, whoa, oh, Jesus. Just a small little detail that makes heaps of difference. Like, with, especially like if you want to do, this is not about monsters as such, but if you want to do like weapon sounds or get hits, if you add a small like, just a sound like this, you can do so many cool tricks, like, you can accentuate the bass, like if you have a game that is full of weapons that are like, that's how the game is going to sound, but if you take the bass away from like the explosions and stuff, but you add the bass with that small clip, you can have a game full of explosions, gunshots, and still keep the subwoofer alive. Pro tip, early access money. And IGF, honorable mentions. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, I have five minutes. Um, so, tentacles, mouth flaps. Ooh, what about bad windy breath? Like there's a big monster fella going like <laughs> Like, done. <laughs> and you can add like wind, like on top of that. So it's like, works really well. So wind, doing stuff with your mouth. Um, claws, like uh, metal. Like think about uh, a werewolf jumping at you and going like Metal, like bars that have like corroded a bit. Take two of them and go like Just like swords. They sound like that in real life, right? So, to put that on claws, so and you can add your vocals on top as well, and like when they grunt, it's like 
super cool. Uh, exploding spores, Ooh. like monsters having like kind of like small critters flying. If, like think about like the explosion. I would break that into bits, like explosion, like maybe a firework. Just go and record fireworks in your living room or whatever. <laughs> the cat goes, what the fuck? So, fireworks, really good. So like, and then, like using pudding makeup, just like, and then like, if your mouth like, just like, that's like, mmm, that spore is flying at you. So, wait, I have only five minutes remaining? God damn. I was supposed to do like a thing, a feature where other sound designers come up and show their monster sounds, but there's no time for that, I'm sorry. <laughs> God damn it. Oh, that would be interesting, because I want to hear that too. Um, so I hope for, especially like a bit more experienced sound designers, they got something out of the impact thing I was talking about. I can go more into details afterwards if you want to know anything like cool audio tricks or stuff, I want to hear your tricks as well, so just find me over here, I'm here the whole weekend. Um, anything else I need to go through? No. No. Shit, that was really fast. Maybe this is a good time for some Q&A. Any questions? Yes. <laughs> Many questions? <coughs> oh, I can't even see. Oh, there's that. Um, if you record something inside, you always have a huge hall or echo effect. Do you have any uh, advices to uh, reduce this? Uh, excuse me, what was the If you re record sounds inside in a room or something, uh, you always have a huge uh, hall effect. Do you have any advices to reduce this? Oh, wow, uh, that's a good one. If you record somewhere, let's say a game jam, and you're in a classroom or something, crazy echo, um, this is going to sound really kind of dumb and really OG, but that's what helps. Like, if you have a jacket or something, you can make a mini vocal book for yourself, so I'm recording here. Wow. I'm minimizing the echo. It looks dumb, but I can do faces and pretend to be a monster here. It's pretty neat. That's like a really cheap option, uh, but effective as well. But with EQ and stuff, um, you just have to find the room tone. Like with an equalizer, you can do this, like you can make the Q uh, value really high, and you boost something like this. You can like search where the room tone is. Like let's say your room has a sound, like you do, and it's like, you hear that in the room. I would mean, just personally, find that room tone like this. So when the sound goes like I'll just lower it down. <laughs> and remember octaves. So let's say this is 650 hertz. Probably in 1300, mathematics, 1300 hertz, there might be another ring tone. <laughs> ring tone, uh, like, just like the octave of that uh, tone. So just we sort of check the octaves and see if that does anything to it. Did that answer the question at all? Yes. Great. But also, the thing is to, like if it's a small sound like, like, <coughs> like that, you would can't, you usually can't the like ending bit. So you only have like, <coughs> and on those the room tone generally doesn't really matter that much, unless your microphone is like that far. But like, oh, another thing is to do this, like have your microphone really close. It gives you like proximity, which gives like more, that's why I was doing like all voice acting this close. It gives more proximity, more, like if I talk like this, I sound really kind of thinner than I, than I am, but if I do this, I sound really bigger and so, think about that. Anything else? Uh, any advice on uh, the synthesizers to, to create the monster, robotic monster sounds? Because I use Massive a lot from Native. Yeah. But I find it really hard to, to use, you know. It's a bit complex. 
using. Any advice on any easier synthesizer? Uh, what software do you use? I, I use Logic a lot. So I'm um, using Logic and a lot of native instruments. So. Yeah, I mean, essentially, like, it's a good idea to just try to get into Master by if you're new to synthesizers. Um, just anything that just, that, like, just take like a patch, any patch in any synth, and just, just, just like try all the knobs there are, like cut off or resonance and all of that stuff, and just play around with them. And a cool thing is, especially like with most software, if you right click, you can assign stuff to like MIDI notes. Like that's how I did the robot in uh, Nuclear Throne Tape, where it's good like, I had it like all of these filters and stuff assigned to my pitch bend wheel. So I could do like stuff. It's really cool. If you need any more advice, it's going to be like a super long topic. So if you want any yeah. cover info, just find me. Yeah, we can talk later. Yes. Thank you. And I'll just quickly pop this cheekily over here. My oh crap. My Twitter handle is at Kisa Kolme. So if you have any audio questions regarding anything, you can find me in Twitter at Skisakolme. Oh. oh yeah, let's do this. Time for the quick train. And there it is. Cool, and time is up. Thank you.